Whatever their size, trains have a special romantic appeal that's been captured by some of the world's best artists, as Rita Braver is about to show us. Well, we have two trains on the move here. Uh, this one has just come across the uh, south side of uh, Kansas City's downtown area, and it's headed down probably toward the Gulf of Mexico. Kansas City has always been a train town, the second busiest in the nation after Chicago. If it hadn't been for one railroad's decision to build the very first bridge across the Missouri here at Kansas City, Kansas City as we know it wouldn't exist. And Peter Hansen, editor-in-chief of Railroad History magazine, says once that bridge across the Missouri River was built in 1869, railroads became the very lifeblood of Kansas City. But there was something more, something that captured the imagination, especially back in the day when locomotives were powered by steam. Anyone who's ever seen a steam engine knows that it's almost a living being. It breathes, it snorts, and uh, it really is a source of fascination just to watch and to see and to smell a steam engine in operation. And also a source of fascination to draw and paint, as art in the age of steam illustrates just a few miles away at the Nelson Atkins Museum. I thought the trade belonged here. I thought it would be appreciated more here than in uh, many other places. Train buff Ian Kennedy, born in North Wales and now a curator here, spent five years assembling the broadest exhibit ever of railroad-related European and American art. What was it about the railroad that inspired artists so much? Well, uh, I think the key message of this exhibition is how artists use the railroad as a metaphor for progress, sometimes favorable, sometimes unfavorable. We have a watercolor here by David Cox which shows a train frightening horses, and that's quite a romantic concept of the railroad, uh, the idea that a horse, the old form of transport, would be scared by the new form. At first, people weren't even sure how to travel by train. This 1830s English print shows old-fashioned horse-drawn carriages attached to the car beds. In those days, the, the, the aristocracy were too grand to mix with the hoi polloi in train compartments, so they travelled in their own carriages. Uh, not very comfortable, because when the train got up to speed, their hats would get blown off, the women would lose their hats. <laughs> in fact, as this mid-19th century scene in London's Paddington Station shows, railroads brought together people from every walk of life. This is a bride going away on a honeymoon, and there's a soldier, a sergeant, actually, he's got three stripes saying goodbye to his kid. He's obviously going off on foreign service. It shows the uh, variety of uh, people who use trains and the hustle and bustle of actually getting on one. Early train travel generated some myths. These sisters dressed in matching travel costumes are not enjoying the French landscape because looking out the window was considered unhealthy. It would give you a headache and have uh, give you a sort of brain fever. Uh, and so uh, it was recommended that uh, when you were traveling by train, you did not look out of the window. You either fell asleep or read a book, and that's what's happening here. The railroads inspired storytelling paintings. A woman on her way to jail, for example. A joyful scene depicting the arrival of a train in a New York town. Would people really come into town when they knew the train was coming so Absolutely. they could get a look at it? They did that right through the 19th century. Because in a small town on the prairies, in the Midwest, for example, uh, the arrival of a train was the biggest event of the day. Trains revolutionized travel, taking passengers, including artists, to places they had never seen before. One of the theories of this exhibit is that national parks really came about in, in large part because of railroads? Yes, because people could get to them. But there was also some ambivalence about the environmental impact of railroads. In 1856, George Innes depicted a coal train leaving Scranton, Pennsylvania. Stumps left where trees were cut down to provide fuel for the locomotive. This picture has been highly controversial and no consensus will ever be achieved about it. But other works focus on the romance of train travel. Claude Monet seemed really fascinated by trains. Oh, he loved trains. Of all the Impressionists, he liked trains best. This is one of his finest pictures. It's called Train in the Snow at Argentoy Station. And I love the headlamps gleaming through the snow-laden air and the blood-red bumpers. 
Impressionist Edward Manet painted this view of a station in Paris, a young girl who seems to be dreaming of the freedom train travel could bring. And it's funny because you get the sense of a railroad yard, but we don't even really see a train. No, you just see the steam from a train. It just evokes the, uh, the railroad without the train. 20th century artists were also drawn to railroads. Vasily Kandinsky created this expressionist work in 1911. Rene Magritte called this 1938 surrealist painting time transfixed. Even the less pleasant aspects of rail travel were turned into works of art. In the 1930s and 40s, Thomas Hart Benton painted several train disasters. And Edward Hopper created bleak railroad landscapes. The artist using the railroad as a metaphor for a state of mind, for a psychological state of mind. In this case, I have to say, not particularly cheerful one. When did railroads kind of stop being a major subject for, shall we say, serious artists? Well, I should think about, say, well, after World War II, probably, uh, roughly. And what was the reason? It just wasn't new anymore? It wasn't new, and also the uh, steam trains were being replaced by diesels, uh, and so the romance of, of steam was being superseded. Even America's grand old train stations languished as air travel became the new glamorous form of transportation. But many, including Union Station in Kansas City, had been rediscovered and renovated. You look at everything from the sconces to the windows to just the way the ceilings are built, it's pretty amazing looking. It really is. What you have here too is you have this very grand hall. That's the, the first impression right. that you have when you come in. Historian Peter Hansen says this Beaux-Arts building, built by the railroads in 1914... That is the original clock. ...recalls the time when train stations were expected to be monumental to make people realize that they were somewhere important. I'm reminded of a quote from the Thomas Wolfe novel, You Can't Go Home Again. Here, he wrote, was the place where people had their comings and goings, where one saw the entire picture of the human destiny. Future generations probably won't create exhibits about art in the age of Amtrak. But even today, railroads can still mean adventure and romance. <laughs>